Have you ever spent hours building the perfect metahuman only to have the hair ruin the final render? Well, here's the good news. With just a few simple tweaks inside Unreal Engine 5, you can fix your metahuman's hair and ultimately save your sanity. This is Virtual Production Insider. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is David and I'm the director of virtual production at Form Studios. And over the years, I've created a lot of cinematics in Unreal Engine 5 with metahumans and I've run into various issues when rendering it out. And a lot of those issues have come from the groom asset, which is the hair of your metahuman. Some common issues that I've run into usually stem from depth of field and it introduces things like artifacts and even a weird kind of blurry halo around the hair. And even wonky physics can happen too, where your hair just kind of goes wild when you render it out. Now I have talked in a previous video how you can disable the physics on your metahuman's groom, which for simple scenes where your character is kind of standing still, that's a great fix. Just be aware that if your metahuman has a lot of animation to them, like they're moving around or they're jumping where the hair should be moving, that's not a great fix for that. But you should definitely check out that video because we explore other common issues that you might run into with your metahuman. But today we're gonna to focus on the groom assets and I'm gonna show you the settings that I tweak to get the best quality possible. All right, so we're inside of Unreal Engine 5 here. This is Unreal Engine 5.5.4, but pretty much everything I'm about to show you will still apply to earlier versions and of course the latest version, which as of the posting of this video is Unreal Engine 5.6. So I've got a scene right here where the metahuman is actually talking to camera and I want you to pay attention to the hair. If you notice, this is just using default settings in Unreal Engine 5 right now, but look at the hair and kind of look at this weird fuzzy kind of blur around the hair. And this is because the depth of field is really struggling to render that hair correctly. And the number one fix that I have found for this issue, and it's gonna sound weird, but it's to just disable the depth of field on the metahuman's hair. Now I know that sounds strange, but if your metahuman's face needs to be in focus, then their hair should be in focus too. There's only certain scenarios, like if you were going for an extreme close up with like a macro effect, that their face would be in focus and their hair would not be in focus, but that's a very specific scenario. Now I'm gonna give you two console commands that you can enter at the bottom of your window and this will actually disable the depth of field on the hair. The first one is r.hairstrands.dofdepth and you're gonna set that to zero. And the second one is r.hairstrands.compose after translucency. And in this scenario, I set it to two. Basically the first command is telling the engine to not render depth of field on the hair. And the second command is telling it how to render that when it comes to translucency. Basically Unreal Engine has an order of operations for how it renders objects. A great example of why this is important is let's say you have a Niagara particle system and and the particles should be out of focus in the background, but they're showing up in focus. Well, this is typically fixed by going into the material for that particle system and telling it in what order it should render the translucency, whether it should be after the depth of field or before the depth of field. And the same thing applies here. We're basically telling it in what order to render the hair so that it looks correct. And you notice we set it to a value of two, but there might be some instances where you wanna set it to a different value. And I'm gonna show you here on the screen, there are actually four different options for how you can render the hair. You can use zero, one, two, or three for the value in the console command. And you can see that each one has a different order for how it renders the hair. Again, I found that using a value of two fixed it in this scenario, but it might be different for your situation. So let's go ahead and let's copy and paste those commands in here. So we're gonna do uh, hair strands dot depth of field depth, and we're gonna set that to zero. And now I want you to pay attention to the hair. There we go but you can see it's still got a little bit of artifacting around it and that's what that second one is gonna do. It's gonna fix the order for how it's rendering. So we're gonna copy and paste that second command and we're gonna set it to a value of two and pay attention to that hair, bam. Now all of that weird blurriness, all that artifacting is now gone and we basically have completely disabled the depth of field in the hair and it looks perfect. And you can also take those console commands and apply them as a console variable in your movie render queue preset. Now the next issue that I've had to fix on several occasions is if you've ever had a weird kind of shimmering effect on your metahuman's hair. This typically happens when you're looking at the hair from a certain angle and it usually stems from either emissive materials or a skylight. So if you ever run into that issue, what you can do is you can click on your metahuman here. We can hit edit and blueprint, switch over to the viewport, and we're gonna just go up here and click on the hair itself. We're gonna click on the asset. Now, what you wanna do is just come up here to search and we're gonna search for a very specific setting, which is called scatter scene lighting. And you can see just by typing in the word scatter, it pops up here and you might see multiple options here. And what you can do is hit the checkbox and then turn it on. And this really is only if you're running into that instance where you're seeing that weird shimmering effect. And I found that this setting right here, the scatter scene lighting really takes care of that. And you can see if I highlight over it, it's basically using the scene color to light the hair, but it's also taking into account things like the skin around the hair to get a better estimation 
option for the lighting. Now, again, that's a very specific scenario to use this setting. This isn't something I use by default. That's the first setting that I would check if you ever run into that issue. Now, here's an honorable mention. Most of you probably know about this, but this is for anybody who's new to Unreal Engine. But if you ever run into an issue where as you move further away from your MetaHuman and things start to look like they're changing, you do wanna make sure that you're using under LOD sync here, this is inside the MetaHuman blueprint, you wanna make sure you're using a forced LOD of zero. This is basically going to tell everything on that MetaHuman to use a level of detail of zero, which is the best quality, and it will also lock everything at LOD zero. So no matter how far away you are, it will keep the MetaHuman's appearance consistent. Now, if you're serious about getting the best quality possible out of your MetaHuman's hair and groom assets, then I highly recommend you go check out Argentum Studios Hair Cinematic Tool. And no, I am not sponsored by them. I just really love this tool, and I think it's worth every penny. As of the posting of this video, it's only $35 for the personal license, and that is a steal. But real quick, I do want to show you what exactly it does inside of Unreal Engine. It's a simple blueprint that you drag into your scene, and then once it's in there, you can click on it, and you have all these options at your disposal. And you can see we can quickly turn on Use Cinematic Settings. I can easily switch between different options for translucency. In this case, we're going to use a value of 2. And you can see that we have even a switch for just simply turning hair depth of field on or off. Literally, all these options are just like one click. They're right at your fingertips. And this tool has so many more options, so many more settings that you can play around and tweak to really maximize the quality of your MetaHuman's hair. There's even different ways to render the hair in here that I haven't even gotten a chance to really play with, but they can get some really stunning results. And I highly recommend you guys check this out. If you're constantly working with MetaHumans, especially that have grooms, this really is worth every penny. And if you're looking for more MetaHuman goodness, well, I may or may not be working working on a new short film right now. And it may or may not be tied to a very popular video game franchise that's coming out in October, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that short film when it comes out. And if you haven't already, be sure to hop into our Discord server. This is a place where you can surround yourself with other people in the virtual production community. And as always, I'm David Stapp with Virtual Production Insider, and we'll see you guys next time.